So you're having a problem choosing between the DJI Action 4 and the GoPro Hero 12. Now, I wanted to take a bit of time before I drop this video so that I get to know both of these cameras as well as possible. The only thing I haven't done is diving because I'm not really into diving and I live in Poland, the water's cold, all that jazz. Let's talk about them really quickly and go through what each one can offer you because they're more or less the same camera. I mean, they're both pretty much on par with each other. GoPro has done a lot of improvements this year with Hero 12. DJI has counted them with an update and added some extras, which make them pretty similar. But the Action 4 overall still comes up on top on just about every single little bit, except HDR, which the Action 4 doesn't have. So price-wise, they're pretty similar, depending where you buy them. You could pick them up for more or less the same price. They're both solid. They're both very durable. I mean, these are action cameras. It's not like the Pocket 3 that you have to be quite delicate with. They're action cameras. They're made for action. You know, they both have removable front lenses. So if you crack it, you can buy a new one, put it on, and you're as good as new. You can also put filters on because they're removable. And if you want to get, you know, cinematic, you can put filters on and, you know, stick to the 180 degree shutter roll. So that's really great about both of them. This one doesn't have a touch screen. This one does. So if you're a vlogger and you're, you know, vlogging around, you can actually change the settings by tapping the front screen. That's fantastic. I was thinking that GoPro was going to, you know, add that to the Hero 12, but they didn't. So the front screen is not touched, but you can see yourself and it works really nicely. There is no lag. GoPro did finally reintroduce Live View Record. So when you have Live View on your phone and you've got it stuck on the front of your car or on the back of your motorbike and you look at the application, you can always see what's happening with the Action 4, the Action 3, the Action 2. The Hero 12 has that once again and it's really great it's nice to see that option is back but it does have quite a bit of lag compared to the action 4 the action 4 just seems like it's instant and you whatever you do is right there on the screen the gopro has this lag i'm hoping it's something they can fix in firmware updates but we'll see about that the action 4 has a larger sensor it does have a larger sensor it's a 1 over 1.3 whereas the gopro here as well is a 1 over 1.9 so the Action 4 has a large sensor, meaning that the effective pixel size is 2.4, whereas the effective pixel size is 1.12 on the GoPro Hero 12. That means that the Action 4 can take in more light into its, you know, pixels, and it looks generally better, especially when we're talking about low light. Now, the Action 4 does have low light image enhancements, so when you're out there and you turn it on, it's like magic. But the GoPro Hero 12 does have an ace up its sleeve because it has HDR. So at night time, if you max out the ISO, it's gonna look fugly, believe me. But if you turn on HDR, the secret weapon that GoPro has, it's gonna retain the highlights and it's gonna get rid of that ugly noise in the shadows. You can watch my video and you know, it's true, that's what happens. And they look fairly comparable in low light, but the Action 4 does win because it does have a larger sensor. So those effective pixels, you know, being larger, they, you know, pull in more light. If you're going diving, which I don't do, 18 meters underwater without a cage, 10 meters with a GoPro. So it's almost half the distance you're going to be able to travel with the GoPro. That's a shame, but, you know, maybe GoPro Hero 13 will make it even, even deeper. Native 4K vertical. What do I mean by that? Well, because it comes with a cage, yeah? If you stick it in the cage, you can mount it this way, but because it has a mount on the side, you can mount it this way and you have 4K vertical. The GoPro Hero 12 has eight by seven as well as 16 by nine formats. And what it's gonna do in eight by seven is film and have vertical mode. It's not 4K though, unless, unless you put it in the, rotational lock yeah rotational lock so put it like this press record and then mount it like that it's a little pro tip right there and then it's still going to be in vertical because it films 4k 
360 horizon lock, which is pretty damn incredible. The Action 4 does it in 2.7K when it comes to the you know, 360 horizon lock, which is a bit of a shame. I thought DJI would up the, um, up the game with that, but they didn't, they stuck to 2.7K. Field of view, 155 degrees, 151. So it is wider on the Action 4. The Action 4 makes me feel like I've lost a lot of weight. This right here is ultra wide on the DJI Action 4. This right here is wide on the DJI Action 4. This right here is standard D-Warp on the DJI Action 4. And I look really great. The Hero 12 has got some very, very serious distortion. This right here, this is Hyperview on the GoPro Hero 12. This right here, this is Superview on the GoPro Hero 12. This right here, this is Wide on the GoPro Hero 12. This right here, this is Linear on the GoPro Hero 12. When it's on, you know, super wide, you're looking at it and you're like, whoa, that is really distorted. I mean, there is not going to be any straight lines on the side. They're all going to be banana shaped. So beware if you like straight lines and you want it to look a little bit more natural, the Action 4 takes care of that and it has a wider field of view. They both have 10 bit, which is fantastic. So if you're grading them, you can, you know, push and push and push that grade and not much is going to happen because they have 10 bit so they can handle color grades a little bit better. They both have log footage. So now both of these suckers right here, they're both hosting log footage. So we've got GP log and we have D log M, which is great because D log M is happening over a lot of cameras, the pocket free, the DJI mini four action Four. you can really grade these and make them look very similar. Whereas this has got GP log and they're pretty flat profiles, which means with the 10 bit color grading, becomes really nice and fun. If you know how to, if you don't, then there are going to be LUTs. You know, I'm, I'm working, I am working on them. LUTs don't happen overnight. You got to check them on a whole load of different footage. Charging, PD fast charge. Yeah, 18 minutes, 80%. So 80% is good. It's, it's good. No fast charge, really slow charging on the GoPro. It's going to take forever to charge this. But the battery will last 160 minutes. 155 minutes. So the GoPro has done a lot of work on the battery and you know, they're working a lot better. They don't drain so much. It's definitely improved since the Hero 11, which used to eat my batteries like crazy. You can get a battery charging case, which you put in free batteries for the Action 4 and it does PD charge. So you can get all three of them up and running really nice and fast and be set more or less for a few hours of recording. GoPro doesn't have that. Hopefully they will introduce one, you know, at a later date or the Hero 13 or whatever. Here, we're talking about minus 20 to 45 degrees. Here we're talking about minus 10 to 35 degrees. So there is a bit of difference. You can use the Action 4 in more situations in colder, hotter climates, and it won't go crazy. When it comes to overheating, they're about the same in the European Union because we have regulations. In America, in America, Action 4 is going to win. It will, hands down, win. It probably won't overheat on you unless you're doing an overheating test, which is just, you're probably a YouTuber. <laughs> Both really, really nice cameras, but this guy is magnetic. This guy doesn't have magnets. It's got GoPro feet, which are, you know, they take a bit of time to get out, put on and stuff. So if you're looking to get this magnetic, you can order from the link down below my GoPro DJI magnetic feet that I co-designed with Ulanzi. They're fantastic. They work really great and they work just like the feet or the mount. There are no feet. The mount on the action, you just go and it's done. Really, really fast, really nice and simple. Very, very simple to use. Invisi stick. This has got Invisi stick. Like the Insta360 cameras, you can remove the selfie stick. Boom, it's gone. GoPro does not have that option at all. So you can't remove it in the application, which you can do with DJI Mimo app. You have fast record. So say a lion is about to be a gazelle. Press the record button, 0.5 seconds. That's how long it takes for it to turn on and start recording. Three seconds, the gazelle would no longer be there. So the GoPro loses out when it comes to fast record, which is a shame because that really does come in quite often. 
that wasn't English, was it? Pre-record, 60 seconds. So when GoPro came out with Hero 12, DJ was like, hmm, let's do some funky stuff. Let's put another ace out of our sleeve. And they did. They introduced pre-record and markers. So pre-record basically means that if you're holding it and a whale's jumping out of the water and you're waiting to film it, you might have missed it. But if you press the record button, it's gonna record 60 seconds before you pressed it. It's magic. 30 seconds on the GoPro, so half the amount of time. And we also have markers. We can press markers exactly where we want to see them later on in your editing program in post. So that's really cool that they have that GPS. I'm hoping GoPro introduce it in their remote, which will probably come out soon. I have no information about that. But it would be cool, you know, because a lot of people are upset. Thousands of thousands of people that never ever use GPS. <laughs> that it's not there anymore. With the Action 4, you can still use it, and that's pretty cool because you can go back to exactly the same spot where you were, or you can find that spot where you were. We took that amazing photo, the waterfall, blah, blah, blah. It's pretty funky, and it does work. Now, the fact that they both have 10-bit and log makes them both very, very similar and easy to grade, makes them professional. They have time code, making them even more professional. So if you're syncing up a whole load of these, you can sync them up using the time code. Now let's be honest, these are not bad cameras. The GoPro Hero 12 is not a bad camera. The Action 4 is not a bad camera. They're both absolutely fantastic and they are two of the best cameras on the market. Two of the best action cameras on the market. If you had to buy any one of these, you'd be happy. But like I said in this video, there are differences between them that you may want. HDR, GoPro. If you want, you know, a larger sensor, better low light, if you want to dive deeper, if you want less lag in live view, if you want a front touch screen, Action 4. Any questions, hit them down below. If you like my video, give me a like. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. Ring that bell. And remember, all affiliate links are down below. So you don't have to search, just click them and um, I will earn a little bit to keep this channel going and you're not going to pay anything extra. It makes life really, really much better.